What was the 20th century really about? The 20th century, it seems to me, was about what Angus Deaton termed the great escape. It was the, the, the century of industrial modernization and economic development, the period in which most of humanity began a transition from agriculturalism to industrialism. No country embodies that transition, I think, more dramatically than Germany. And I'd like to make a case as to why that is. The reason why Germany is the country of the 20th century, so to say, is because it's emblematic of both these big material institutional changes and the intellectual revolutions of the 20th century. And those, are, those two are intimately linked, I think. Germany embodies the story of partial modernization in the age of extremes. It unified very late in the 19th century, but it quickly surpassed the, the British Empire um, in industrial terms. It produced the most advanced technologies, the most advanced and dynamic labor movements, some of the most advanced political movements and ideas, but it remained in some ways a peasant state. In fact, its peasant population peaked in the early 1930s. It was riddled, partly as a holdover from the Holy Roman Empire, with small, land-starved agrarian estates and farms that were tremendously unproductive and that kept most of the peasant population in uh, back-breaking toil. And that problem, the problem of resolving this issue is famously, infamously, what underwrote the territorial and genocidal ambitions of the Nazi state which destroyed much of Europe and indeed started many other things. It started the unraveling of the European empires and the beginning of the colonial liberation period and it initiated a whole period of American hegemony that lasts to this day. None of that would have, would have happened without Germany's own very particular, but in some ways very universal struggles with modernization. It's the crucible of industrial modernity in that sense. In other words, it, it's a dramatic and violent confirmation of the basic model of modernization and also of, of its, the self-sustaining dynamic of economic development because the post-war settlement made it possible for Germany's power to be integrated in the cold and steel community and eventually the precursor of a united Europe, which is relatively speaking more peaceful. So in a way, it's at the forefront of this big uh, industrial trend, of this great historical rupture, namely this transition that also led to the, the, the large rupture of our time, the Second World War, and that was born out of Germany's disastrously incomplete industrialization. But unsuccessful in war, they did conquer large parts of our modern mind, because the story of development is also intimately linked to the story of, of modern intellectual development, in particular the development of the modern research university, which perhaps is the most single important institution in, in modernity. It created all the industrial technologies and implements that underwrote modern economic development and that drove development also from the human capital and educational side. The best way to tell the story is to the story is to go through the country in which these developments took off in the late 18th century and reached its apex in the first half of the 20th century, the country that brought us most of modern physics, chemistry, social science, the Haber-Bosch process, all these things that are totally um, fundamental to our modern life. In its crisis, in German crisis, German destruction and German and intellectual technological achievements, they all have underwritten the, this civilizational step function that humanity has described in the 20th century. And that's why I believe there's no other country through which to better tell the story of the 20th century, in economic history terms, but also in intellectual history terms, than Germany. And I'll end with a quote from that totally non-controversial German Otto von Bismarck, who, upon being asked in 1898 what the most consequential development uh, in recent history was, he said somewhat enigmatically, but I think quite fittingly, North America speaks English.